Hello there, Hi5 people. Kelvin here from London. Continuing my reviewing of all speakers and amps I can get my hands on, vintage, new. What I'm about really is bang for bucks, right? Trying to find bargains. That's kind of my nature, yeah? It's what I've been doing all my life, really. And, you know, I can't spend £3,000 on a pre-amplifier. I'd make me cry. So I have to find bargains and that's what I'm up to, you know. Okay, what have we got today? We have from the mid 80s, about 1986, Ruark Sabre. That's a British company. They started in the mid 80s at uh, 1985, which is kind of uh, unusual in a way because a lot of British companies started in the 70s and were bankrupt by the 80s and they get bought out and stuff like that. Uh, that's another thing worth knowing, to be honest, that uh, a lot of companies that were in the 70s, I think I'm going to guess Monitor Audio, Kef, lots of the British things that you lesser known like Tangent, Ram, uh, I don't know, lots of them, they landed up getting subsumed into bigger corporations, generally speaking, you know. Anyway, uh, back to these things. Uh, Ruark Sabre. So this was the first speaker they made, yes? It was uh, Alan and Brian O'Rourke. That's where you get the name Ruark, yeah? Um, what is interesting about these things is the Ruark name is not super famous. And they didn't have any standout great sort of uh, hits, you know what I mean? A, a, a famous speaker that everyone had. But they were a pretty competent company, I've got to say that. The reason I'm saying it is it's not a fa that famous a name and that kind of gets it a little bit under the radar as far as cost goes, you know? Because if com companies have one big hit, it can make all their stuff desirable for years and, you know, do that on the second-hand market. And sometimes it isn't any good, you know? Or, you know, it's only certain ones that were good. But anyway, I uh, just, uh, I digress. You can buy these on eBay. The sold prices I looked at, roughly about 60 quid, you know? And I compared these to a pair of modern-day speakers, which I'll tell you in the end. Uh... And these were better. Those modern ones cost about 300 quid. And I preferred these. And I'm going to leave it to the end. Because we're going to do the sound. Okay. So, generally... Okay, first song I did. Uh, Angelou Van Morrison. So, I'm listening to this on a name power amp. And a Lynn Wakanda preamp. Also, I swapped around the preamp for the preamp of a NAD 3020. And I preferred that by a long way. The Lin was too technical, was too analytical. Clearly, for me, I was much more enjoying myself with the effect of that NAD, that old NAD 3020 preamp from 1980. So, you know, this is how funny this whole world of hi fi is. Getting back to the music, Angelou Van Morrison. Generally, it's okay. This is not a blow your brains out speaker, right? It's only 60 quid or, you know, it's a, it, it was a sort of budget-ish speaker. I wouldn't say it was a budget speaker, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a, but it's got some quality. It does have some quality about it, this. Generally, okay, tight bass, not very low. It's a closed box. There's no port on here. It's also got a veneered back. It's a well-made thing, you've got to say that. Um, the closed box means it, it makes bass tighter. In the real old days, in the 70s in particular, there were a lot of closed boxes and ports came in as people tried to get more bass out of smaller boxes. That's basically what happened. And you get it, but you, generally speaking, lose the tightness, yes? Because, you know, that's a sealed box in there. It's kind of restraining this driver, uh, he says in his uh, non-scientific fashion, yeah? Okay, um, Angelou, 
Uh, not, not very low bass. Uh, nothing annoyingly wrong about this speaker. Uh, not bright. It's not really giving me those girl singers in a gorgeous way. And it's not filling the spaces in the air, you know, with ethereal, angelic sounds. But it ain't bad. It ain't bad. And it's better than this modern one, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, and it's also, yeah, because of the lack of air in it, I'm not getting a big sound stage, yeah. It's okay, it's competent, it's solid. If you have a good front end, this will be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be better than a two or three hundred pound speaker you could buy brand new, you know, so that's kind of worth knowing. Okay, moving on. Sweetest Decline, Beth Alton, really annoying song to listen to a lot. But I listen to it because it's she's got almost an edgy voice and the productions are really lots of high and mids and sort of edgy. Only good speakers, good systems does that sound nice on. Uh, speakers going, not, as at, not atmospheric enough, but that's not killing me. And the vocals, a bit edgy, a bit, yeah, from a fairly uh, inexpensive speaker. Okay, next song, Go Your Own Way, Fleetwood Mac. I got here, vocals are fine, as they should be, because those girl singers are fantastic on there. Uh, I, I want more space and I want more bass. Yeah, you get in the picture. It sounds like I'm really down on this speaker, but truth is, before I started making this video, I thought I'll give us another blast for half an hour before I start recording, I was enjoying it, yeah? It's cohesive, you know? It's not uh, not annoying. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's still enjoyable. When this, the closed box always seems to give you the, the tempo and the toe tapping, they used to call it, you know? Getting the rhythm. The rhythm is tight enough that you get hold of the rhythm. So it's still enjoyable, these little things. Okay. Let me tell you, let me tell you then what I was comparing. I've been comparing a lot of speakers today, but in particular, okay, I was comparing them with those, which I'm, which you may know if you're a hi-fi person. Elac Debut 2.0 by Andrew Jones. Yeah, I mean, this thing about having a designer yeah, they've all been designed, you know. These were designed by Alan and Brian O'Rourke, but they just called the company Ruark. And they didn't put in, they didn't say, yeah, oh, we designed that. You can't have anything without someone designing it, can you? you? Can't just throw a load of stuff in the air and speaker turns up. So, you know, anyway, I find that a bit humorous, really. Okay, quick conclusion on these, just so you get the proper picture. Enjoyable, robust, well-made, should endure in time. The closed box, I always feel that it gives the bass driver a longer life, gives a less hard time to the bass driver, because ports, the bass driver really seems to make bigger excursions. It's not restrained. Uh, you know, that's as near as I can, uh, my science was, as good as my science gets. Uh, so yeah, this I found better than the Elax. It's not bright. You won't put it on and just go, wow, that's so much clarity and detail. It's kind of all there, but it's a little restrained. It has tight, okay bass. Uh, that's about it. Uh, do I want them? I, you know, for 50 or 60 quid, I, I'd probably have them because I couldn't really turn it down. And if they were working, you know, you've got to make sure these things are working. Um, okay, I think that's it. Loads more stuff on my channel. If you look, there's tons of other videos, about 70 or 80. Okay, thanks. Bye for now.